But folks, welcome to another episode of 4x4 Viewfinder. And as you've seen in the description today, we're going to be doing some maintenance on the brake drums on the Fortuner. Um, now I'm pretty sure it's the same on the Hiluxes as well. Um, and I think you can actually apply this to, to any vehicle that has brake drums. Um, it's a very pretty simple procedure and you know, especially if you've got a 4x4 and you've gone and done some um, mudding and you know, some loose sand and all that stuff, that stuff tends to go into the drum and sit there, you know. So it's good to periodically just have a check, open it up, it's not that hard to do. Um, open it up, have a look on the inside, clean it out a little bit, also see what your pads are like. Um, like I said, it's not that hard to do, um, might seem intimidating, but it's not that tough. Um, and yeah, we've got some rust accumulated on the drum itself on, on my vehicle, so um, we're going to be cleaning it up, spray painting the drum again, and then putting it all nicely back together in a proper fashion. And um, yeah, then we're ready to go. So first up, I'm going to show you what you guys need. Alright folks, so from a serious point of view, no jokes, you'll need a torque wrench, you'll need an impact wrench, you'll need a dump a level, you'll need a wire brush, you'll need two 8mm bolts, a magnifying glass, an allen set, you'll need a grinder with a car brush, you'll need an assortment of hammers and a baboon spanner in no particular order, and then you will need a spray paint, some acetone, you'll need your welding visor, and you will need your air blowing situation thing with your tanky thing. Right, so it's so all the tools you'll need, let's get into the work. Alright folks, so first up, first thing you want to do is make sure that you've got something substantial in front of all your other drive wheels so that you don't um, move forward because your handbrake has to be down. Next up, um, jack up the wheel in question, a suspect and then put a bokeh underneath um, just to make sure that you the, the car doesn't drop on you and that stuff um, and that way you're perfectly safe Right folks, so before we start I'll give you a little time lapse of uh, me taking the wheel off and all that stuff um, Shout out to Anthony Burton for keeping me on my toes to regards to locking the exposure on the camera of the phone um, I always forget to do that and uh, yeah, the first thing I thought when I set up the phone now remember, so yeah Thanks Anthony. Um, yeah, well, let's get into it and let's see how far we can get. Yeah, yeah. First up, what you do is we need to remove the drum from the assembly. And uh, you'll notice that here is a hole with thread in it right so what you do is you take your eight millimeter bolt got a hex nut here but you can use basically any eight millimeter and you sorry wait slightly a little bit just just a squeeze of q20 right very very little as little as possible then you take your trusty oh sorry and i forgot about the other one the other one is on the opposite side, directly opposite side. Slightly, just just a squish of Q20. The problem is if you get that Q20 on the discs on the inside, you're gonna have problems. So that's why you just just enough to just wet the area. And then now this is a process of turning opposite. You can't just turn all the way on one side and turn all the way on the other side. You're gonna have to play with it. So basically, what this does is these nuts now push in and pull the. Um, the drum away from the assembly. Right, so let's start. Feel it turn in and then you hear there how it's clicking. You give it, there we go, it's shot out once. Now you do it on the other side as well. You hear it clicking. Give it a little bit more and you'll see it starting to, to come loose. And all you do is you just turn, 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 until it's basically loose. 
that. And you come out, don't be afraid to go more and more because this thing is probably quite hard to remove. But now also you've got two bolts to hold onto from which to remove the disc. Alright, here we go. Look at all that brake dust in there. Look at all that dirt and stuff. It's pretty bad. Alright, and also now look at that. I'll show you now. Look at all this brake dust and stuff accumulated here, especially here. That's a lot of brake dust. The pads themselves look pretty nice. They, there's still a lot of travel left on them. Um, just want to wipe them down because I've got a bit of a squeak on here. So I'm just going to use a rag to, to wipe it off. You don't do any chemicals or any other stuff on this. You don't want that to touch it. Also on the, the disc, on the drum on the inside, on the whole surface area where these pads connect, you do not put anything there. You don't put any cleaning chemicals. You don't put anything there. Because that will cause your heart attack. And this, what we're basically going to do, we're just going to blow it off with air and that stuff. And scrape off where we can some of the dirt and so on. And uh, yeah, Bob's your uncle. Um, also, we'll be adjusting, but I'll show you how to adjust the, the pads on the inside. So basically what you do is you, when you put it back, you're going to tighten it slightly so that there's some squeal on it so it rebeds itself and that way you also know that your pads are close enough and set right for, for what you want to do. Alright, um, right, let's get into the next part. Let's, let's clean the drum first um, and then we'll come here and clean this guy. Alright, here we are. You can see it's pretty, pretty rough in here. We'll clean this all up nicely. Like I said, don't use any chemicals in here. I might use the wire brush slightly for these corners to get that stuff out. Or maybe some type of cleansing kit. Um, but that's about the extent of it. Like I said, don't put anything on the inside here because you can see here, this looks like some kind of oil or something. If you put copper slip and all those things here, as the wheel gets warm, that copper slip, and because of the speed of the rotation, that copper slip will slip out and fan out and it'll start going into here. And you don't want that, you'll have squealing and all that types of nonsense and you'll have bad braking, especially if you're going to go off-roading, you're going to have slippage on you, your traction control is not going to work properly. So, um, And also, you know, you can mess this down this on the inside up, so the, or the surface on the inside, you'll mess it up. So, rather not work with any chemicals, just wipe it out nicely um, with a dry rag, get as clean as you can, blow out some air, blow with air around this thing, uh, of the surface around here as well. Also, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to be taking the car brush, on the grinder and I'll be grinding all this off, all the surface rust off and so on to get it as, as clean as possibly can. Then we'll take acetone and then with the acetone, with the acetone we'll wipe it down nice and clean, wait till it's dry, then take spray paint and spray paint it nice uh, matte black again so it looks spiggerish like a brand spanking new one. Alright folks, so what's going to happen now is I'm just going to blow it down, I'm going to go in all the crevices and all that stuff. But what's on my while I'm doing that, um, so that I don't waste your time and everything, I'll be discussing some absolutely crucial information. You have to remember this when you want to do this. So <clears throat> bear that in mind and um, yeah, pay complete attention to what I say because if you miss this, you, you should then rather not do this. Alright, okay, let's get into it. Put this, put this guy on.
folks. So if you've got that, then you sort it. Then you should be able to do this on your own by yourself without any professional help or anything like that. And also, you will also not cause a breakdown with your vehicle, causing it to completely veer off the road and um, perhaps even collide, collide with someone else. So that is that is why you should not have missed it. I hope you took notes. It's pretty, pretty crucial. All right. So this is the part, the crucial part that I was talking about earlier, the part where you should have taken notes. This is where all of it comes together. So I've started off and I've put some uh, copper slip on the outside of the drum, not on the inside. Then, this is the, the most important part. The hammer, the handle that you just had to make according to your hand size and all that stuff. You take this hammer and you put it away. Then, you put your drum onto your wheel. Like such. Remembering to line up the holes. If you did your job right, it should slip on like a glue. Alright folks, and that's that. Now um, basically you need to feel there is some resistance. I'm happy with that. Um, on the wheel, there must be the slightest inkling of, of resistance on the wheel. Otherwise, through the back here, there's a hole. You just take a flat screwdriver, you stick it in, and you just turn it up. You turn it up to push it out, you turn it down to pull it in. And you want it to push out slightly, so there's some resistance. You want to hear it slightly touch on the inside, because that way it'll seat itself again and clean itself off, and everything will be sorted. And that's basically that, folks. Um, then you put your wheel back on. Remember to talk your nuts and, and that stuff. And it's pretty important to talk it properly, um, especially since you've had it off completely, you've cleaned all the surfaces and all that stuff. You don't want it to, to seat in properly. And then that's that. That's another job done, another maintenance job. Um, I'll see you on the flip side when we tackle some other maintenance part. Um, I've got some plan for a couple of things. Um, there's also some big news coming soon, but we'll get into that. And uh, yeah. I think that's it folks hope you enjoyed the video um, please like subscribe comment and share subscribing is absolutely free it costs you nothing not even a cent um, and yeah and I'll see you guys in the future again for another DIY video till next time folks happy 4x4ing <laughs>